Hey, how I'm, are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. It was February. February, Valentine's month and Black History month. And you got your hearts going. Yes. And yeah. I did not do this intentionally. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> Let's just get it out of the way. It's a month of hearts. There's so much emotions going on, so much relational dynamics going on. Yes. You know, I was reading a book and we were talking about this woman is really into fighting for people's marriages so that people don't get divorced. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the premise is like she was coming from mm -hmm. what creates more problems than it heals. Mm. Because sometimes when people go through their emotional disconnect in their marriages, they feel like being outside of the marriage is going to be much easier healthier and much better but the studies that they've done they've realized that most people when they get divorced they find themselves more isolated and lonely yeah than before and so the percentages let me see if i can find the percentages and i can read them to you <laughs> Talking about February and relationships and love and all that good stuff let me see if i can find the statistics they say they did a random sample of over 8,600 adults mm -hmm. and they revealed the percentages of those who felt lonely. The results are as follows. The marital status and percent, the percent reporting loneliness. Married people, their level of loneliness in percentage was 4.6. Wow, 4.6. Never married, 14.5. Never married, divorced, 20.4, widowed, 20.6, separated, 29.6. Wow. So separated couples, widowed couples, widowed people, divorced people almost are in the same range, but the most lonely are the most the separated ones. Wow. Yeah. So married people, the loneliness level they have is 4.6. And then the people who've never been married, the percentage is 14.5. <clears throat> so the month of February, Valentine's month, loneliness, what would you tell people that are... Actually, some people dread February for the fact that they don't have Valentine's. They don't have a partner for Valentine's. Yes, that's very true. Very, very true. And... I think that loneliness, it happens even when you're not alone. Yes. Because majority of the time you can, not that you are married or in a relationship or entertaining a relationship of a friend, sometimes it's just not enough. You know, for some people, sometimes it's not enough. And I cannot express this enough because when you don't understand your own needs, you can't know how to meet those needs. So you can have a full room of people and feel lonely because you don't know how to engage in your own needs, right? Yeah. So in a relationship, it happens because sometimes we get so caught up in trying to meet other people's needs that we forgot about ours. So we're making everybody happy, but then we feel lonely. We feel sad. We feel un undeserving some people, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's, that's the greatest and the biggest mistake that we make is not acknowledging our needs. Yes. And I think, you know, even as we work with people, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have not become comfortable with themselves and becoming comfortable with their emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't feel comfortable sitting in uncomfortable emotions. So they run from them by looking for something that's going to make them feel better. Yeah. Uh, the more we tend to do that, we disconnect from ourselves because part of our ability to connect with other people is depending on our emotional availability. Mm -hmm. And if you don't learn to be emotionally available to you by knowing what your needs are and meeting your needs in a healthy way, yes. you're going to put that responsibility on someone. And sometimes people 
think when I get married, I won't be lonely, but you can't expect your spouse to meet all your emotional needs, no matter how much they love you, because they are not God. Yes. They are, and they are limited. Absolutely. You know? And even when you're relating to people, because we all are in our differences, our experiences, our temperaments, we, we feel connected differently. Yeah. So when, when you are, for example, in temperament as a sanguine, you need physical touch, you need constant reassurance, you need, you know, the hugs and the, all those kisses. And then, Compliments. right. And then there are people who feel connected when they are just sitting with you and talking deep conversations and they, to them, they feel more connected to you that way. And so when we're working with couples, one of the things that we realize is that, that the couple goes through disconnect every once in a while. Every couple has their own, what they call like an emotional dance where they don't feel connected. Yeah. And so, and you grow in your understanding of what you need, what work two years ago may no longer be cutting it for you now and things like that. So even couples have to be intentional in creating that connection. So when you're coming from a singles mindset of just thinking with a, a big paint broad stroke, like you're thinking, if I meet the person, I will not be lonely anymore. Yeah. That time to do the work of connecting, you feel like it shouldn't be this way because we love each other. We right. should be alone and things should be easy and creates more frustration. Yeah. So now, you know, recently I've seen people don't even want to cultivate the work to develop emotional connections and develop relationships. Yeah. They just go, I just need someone for Valentine's. I just need someone for the holidays. I just need someone for New Year's Eve. They don't want to invest that energy into that. And I think that creates more loneliness and isolation because you're just using people. Right. You're 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 selling yourself a dream that you saw in a movie and you wanna get the you wanna get closer to that idea, right? Yeah. And you know, I read an amazing book. Um, I usually um, recommend it a lot through my counseling session. It's, it's called Single Ready to Mingle. And one of the things that stood out to me from that book was that when you jump into a relationship, majority of people go into a relationship looking for love. Yes. Right. Yes. And in the book, he explains so perfectly that you cannot walk into a relationship with the idea of looking for love. Yeah. because you bring love with you yeah. so when you love yourself and you know what you carry now you're bringing love to a relationship and you can share your love with the other person's love and now it comes together yeah. because if it doesn't work out you're gonna walk out with your love you still have yeah. love for yourself you know that self-love is so important yeah. that if something doesn't work out you still have that love for yourself. You so have a the heartache is going to be a, a lot less. Yeah. Right. Because you know how to love yourself. And in the process of that, when you know, when you love yourself, you value yourself. So you know that you have boundaries within what kind of relationship you want to come into. Now, you know what you're going to allow and what you're not going to allow. So yeah. you have a little bit more respect for the things that you're, you're willing to sacrifice to be in that relationship. Yes. You know? and, and, and also knowing your love language, you know, allowing yourself to know and say, Hey, you know, I mean, you can Google these things, you go online, you say, you know, I want to find out what my love language is because you want to know what your love language is. I want to love people the way I, I know that people, the person wants to be loved, not the way I want to be loved. Because yeah. if you are my friend and you like gifts, but I like hugs. I can't just give you hugs because I like to give hugs, right? Yeah. I have to love you the way you need to be loved yeah. because that's that's how it works. Yeah. That's how relationships work. Because you, it's connections. You have to build safe connections. And I think even when you come to connecting in mm -hmm. emotions of, with, with other people, 
sometimes isolation and withdrawing is a trauma response mm -hmm. to pain and abandonment or neglect. Some people, when they are if their childhood trauma was neglect and abandonment, there is tendencies to either go to one extreme of I need everybody and I'll suck the life out of them, or you know, I don't need anybody, I'll be okay by myself. And not knowing how to be regulated in a healthy way. So when you don't feel connected, instead of repairing that connection, you withdraw back into your childhood traumatic reactions, which could be complete isolation. Or I'm going to go out there and feel whoever I find, I don't care. I'll just go <laughs> with whatever I find, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's a, a that's an unhealthy way of meeting your needs, right? Because you're basically telling yourself, I'm going to meet my need however I can. And it doesn't matter who's going to meet it. I'm just going to meet it, right? But I think it's, it starts within yourself. Yeah, because I think if, 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 and this is when people are coming from those traumatic re childish reactions that they've not resolved, they literally don't have those skills. Yeah. to know how to do it well so they go with that immediate because you know how kids are kids want immediate response i need ice cream for breakfast and if you don't give it to me you're selfish and mean and i don't like you anymore and all that good stuff yeah and we need to be as adults know how to grow in not only our understanding of ourselves but our needs in with intention that when we connect with people we can have room for them yeah you're not just self-centered. It's about me, 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 and what I want, but I don't care about what you want because you yeah. could, that, that's part of the selfishness that shows up in relationships where if you're not meeting my needs, I'm out, but I don't care to know how to connect with you. Mm -hmm. you know? And you hear that a lot in, in, in couples, right? When, when you see the couples are getting ready to get a divorce or they're decided to seek counseling, you're like, I don't feel happy. You don't make me happy. You're yeah. not, I'm not happy in this relationship. So they're literally looking for something that it's in the relationship, but they just haven't met those, 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 those needs in, in a healthy way because they don't even know what they're doing, right? Yeah. They've been running on, on such a adrenaline in the marriage, right? Between being parents and between, you know, being household um 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 people, you know, like they're 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 homemakers, you know, the wives or 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 things like that. And they're forgetting about the things that really matter. Yeah. And also I think when you're learning to sit with loneliness, I think we judge that emotion like it's a bad emotion, mm -hmm. you know. That need to connect. We live in a fallen world, you know, that ultimately we were created for create for connections with, with, with for relationships with other people. Yes. We function at our fullest and our highest when we are feeling when we are fully connected, mm -hmm. healthy relationships. But sometimes also we need to feel connected to God in such a way that we have that sense of unconditional security and conditional love that even if in marriage you may feel like your spouse is not fully connecting or if you're single and you don't have a relationship that is not the worst case scenario that yeah. you can learn to tolerate the emotion of aloneness you can be alone and not be lonely yes Absolutely. Being alone doesn't always mean that you're going to be lonely <laughs> because lonely means that you cannot connect to somebody else. Yeah. So, and even society sometimes mm -hmm. shames being alone as if you're, something is wrong with you. And so some people find themselves jumping in relationships just so that they are not alone. And the shame of being alone, not alone like it's a bad thing, but alone like you're not married, you don't have a relationship. And people try to get away from that stigma just so that they are not a statistics. Uh -huh. And really so many people go into relationship just to, because they want to run from that. Mm -hmm. Or because they're running out of time. Oh my God, you know, I'm in my late thirties, mid forties, and I don't have children and I don't have a spouse. And, and, and they, they're thinking that because they're a certain age, you're supposed to be at a level. And, and I think that that's the biggest mistake that anybody can make, you know, compare where you're at with everybody else. Yeah. You know, because you can't be at everybody's level all the time because we all go through different stages in our lives and 
we have to I, I believe that we have to learn how to embrace those things and realize you said something very important that you know there the, uh, that there are things that we need to be connected to and I think that at, again I, I have to keep bringing up the word needs because this is where it boils down to right there are going to be needs that only you can meet there are going to be needs that other people have to meet yes. but there are also needs and voids that only God can meet in your life Absolutely. And no matter how many times you're married it doesn't matter how many people are in the room if there's that place in your heart of loneliness where only God can fill in that need it's yeah. a spiritual thing right because at the end of the day we have to realize that we are a spirit that live in a body that have a soul so how do I control my body how do I control my emotion but how do I control my spirit is yeah. the most important part yeah. you know yeah and you have to be attuned to yourself and also being uh, connected with the uh, changes that go on in your life. Yes. Because I think even as we get older, you know, you become more secure in your sense of self. Yeah. That you're no longer um, influenced by outside influences. Hopefully many people are in that space as opposed to the other way around, especially as you're getting older, that you're no longer as, just for things that are not healthy, just so you can run away from being alone, but to know how to meet your needs. Because unfortunately, many people, especially those that have not been to counseling, I've encountered people who are very detached from themselves and they take it as a chief, a badge of honor. Mm. I don't feel anything. I don't, you know, because you're wounding people without realizing that you're doing because you're not fully available for you. Yes. You know, you don't even know when you need to be hard, to be understood because you just don't connect with that. So yes. it's very difficult for people to connect it with you mm -hmm. in, in that very space, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's important. I would really encourage everybody that is listening to us that it's very important. And I encourage you guys to come to a place of getting to know yourself. Yeah. Getting to know yourself, the things that you enjoy to do alone, enjoy the things that you like to do with others, and yeah. value the time of alone, like loneliness, right? Loneliness, right. Enjoy your own company. Yes. I, you know what? Again, I'm sanguine, right? And I love people, and I love to be around people, and. And sometimes I'm home alone and my TV's on, my radio's on, I'm searching on my social media and it's like not enough. Yeah. But as, as I get older, I, I like to be in a place where I could read a book by myself. I can meditate or pray, or I can just be home and clean my house with a quiet and peaceful home. And it always doesn't have to be based around people, but I enjoy my time or I go get my nails done or, you know, I, I work out or anything that has to do with it to feed my own personal save and say, you know what? I matter. Yes. I'm important to myself. I have to love myself the way nobody else is going to love me. And it's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, you know, one of the, when you're work, when you're working with people, that the pain of being alone, loneliness, you know, in a where there is trauma attached to it, is that it becomes an open door for for the enemy to attack your thoughts. Yes. If your interpretation of being alone, something is wrong with me. No one will ever like me. I, some, you know, I have to do A, B, C to be connected to someone. Those things are open doors because you, you start to uh, attract things that are not healthy because your perceptions are distorted. Mm -hmm. Choosing relationships, you're not fully... Uh, clear in your judgment and you're just choosing just so you can avoid feeling pain and so even as we work with people as we work with ourselves mm -hmm. even when people come to us to connect with us there is sometimes people don't feel connected with us as, as counselors not because we are evil we're doing anything wrong but sometimes it's just that connection or the matching with people mm -hmm. and even within ourselves when we as we know that that's okay and that's normal we don't personalize it in our way because yeah. if you're thinking it's 
if your your trauma or your thinking has shaped your interpretation of they say rejection, like right, we all don't want to be rejected. No human being wants to experience rejection. Mm -hmm. And we try to make up so that we can be liked by everybody. And then we lose ourselves because we are not comfortable with ourselves. Like you say, our needs are not getting met. So I'm gonna meet your needs so that I feel connected to you. Mm -hmm. I'm at the expense of my own needs, you know? Yeah. And that's where you will fail, you know, and that's when you start to please people and you start putting yourself last. And I think that we need to start learning how to put ourselves first yeah. so yeah. we can give the best of ourselves and you will attract the right people. You know, like if we're constantly trying to be something that we're not, we're going to attract the wrong people. You oh, don't. Yeah exactly you don't want to or, or you know and let me tell you something i strongly believe that what you fear you attract so wow. if you're afraid that you're not going to find a man that is going to be faithful to you you're going to attract the wrong people because you have fears that are manifesting in your life you know right because it's, i tell people that's your faith <laughs> your faith means that you are in agreement that this is true this is yes. what it's gonna happen so if you your faith is rooted in fear mm -hmm. that's your agreement that's your heart is in agreement with that so mm -hmm. be careful what you're afraid of because your fears will come true yes not only what you're afraid of but what you're speaking into your life because you have to remember that our words have so much power right life and death is in the, it's in our tongue so we have to be careful what we're speaking because we will see those manifestation in our lives right so if we want to see good things come into ourselves we have to start speaking what we want what do you want you want good relationships you want good friendships you want good things coming your way that are going to be for you yeah. you know and our worst enemy is comparison. Yeah. That's our worst enemy, especially women. We're constantly comparing ourselves to what the Instagram models are doing, to what our single friends are doing, and we're married and we wish we were doing, or what our what us single women feel when we see our married friends doing things with their family and we don't have that. Yeah. You know, it, it's a killer. It's definitely a killer. Yeah. Learning to be content in our own skins and loving yes. and accepting, you know. There is this exercise I give my clients and I ask them to look in the mirror and see what they see. Yeah. I've had people tell me, like, I can't look in the mirror. <laughs> because they don't, they don't feel comfortable with the person that they see because they have probably judged that person. They think it shouldn't be that way. You wasted so much time and they run from that. Yeah. And yeah, especially thank God the winter is almost over because we know that there are temperament that suffer seasonal depression because of it, like the sun, yes. winter, the sunshine. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that we can help people to cope when they feel alone and disconnected from others? One of the best advice that I will be able to give somebody dealing with stuff like that, with you know, with situations of loneliness, would be separating yourself with yourself find what do you like to do personally yeah. this is this is the main thing what do you like to do by yourself not with other people yes you feel lonely but you need to get to know yourself first if the world ended tomorrow and there's nobody else but you what would you do where would you go yeah what, what kind of development you would create because you cannot find creativity in a, in a room full of people. People, let me tell you, you look at the best artists, their best music is built on their loneliness. Why? Because they have the chance and the time to find themselves in your own emotions. Speak your emotions. Never be afraid of your emotions. How do you feel at this moment? What kind of beautiful poetry can you create? What kind of book would you write about yourself right now in the, in the process of your loneliness? And then when you go back and you look at it, you're going to see the positive things that you have within yourself. Absolutely. And you know, as you were saying that, I remember I had a client who was experiencing, I think they were mostly depressed, but they were writers. Mm. And I encouraged them to journal. But one of the things that they would speak, I could, at the time, 
they were avoiding the writing and they were like, but, but then they realized that they felt better as they started to write. Mm-hmm. So I encourage them to write more because what they do, what people don't realize everything, there is a purpose and a, for everything that happens under the sun. Yeah. You don't like to feel mm-hmm. alone, even for people who are grieving and they feel disconnected from the loved one who passed away and they are experiencing extreme loneliness. Mm-hmm. As you say, like as they journal through their emotions, they are putting worse to what they are feeling. And that's the articulation that can bring encouragement and hope Yes. Someone else, you know, yeah. seasons um, come and seasons go. You're not always going to be lonely, mm-hmm. but you can learn so much from that time when you are alone that it's not, you don't put it to waste. Yes. So much from it, you know? Yes. And, and can, you know, there's always practical things, you know, working out, go taking walks, you know, always having those breathing exercises when you feel because when you're lonely, you may experience depression, you may experience anxiety. So you need to learn how to control those physical emotions that are being manifested in your body because you can even get sick out of loneliness and depression and anxiety, you know. So there there's a lot of things that you can physically do. But yeah. once you get your 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 emotional yeah. you know, intelligence in, in order. Yeah. things get easier yeah. you know and you but again you have to connect with yourself because this is so personal nobody can fix it for you no. nobody can fix this for you even if there's 20 people after you and you still have that loneliness inside of you it comes from within yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know i i said this and i think as we're gonna close in a sense that i grew up in boarding schools mm-hmm. and what boarding schools gave us is it gave us a high tolerance for being alone. We learned to be, because we were like at seven years old and we were in boarding schools. You don't have your parents to be like making a mess out of it, whatever that is. Yeah. So we were conditioned to be more independent emotionally than we would have been had we been bonding with our parents. Mm-hmm. So yes, we had to heal the trauma of abandonment and neglect and all that stuff. Yeah. But the silver lining was that we learned to have a high tolerance for aloneness so that we know how to cope with it. Some people have never experienced any time of being alone that they find it like a plague. Yeah. So if you're one of those people who are on the extreme fear of being alone, that even being in a house by yourself terrifies you, just do the incremental toleration until you have you have a wider uh tolerance level so you may start out by saying okay let me go out and go to the restaurant by myself maybe go to a coffee shop by yourself and things like that so that your system your nervous system becomes accustomed to tolerating periods of being alone without separating it like it's a danger and it's a threat that you need to run from yes something that can be also very helpful that's good that's really good yeah yes This, this is really good Yes. So where do you, where do people find you, Melissa, again? They can find me on in my Instagram page at New Creations Counseling NJ. Now my YouTube channel is up. It's Melissa Melendez and you can find me under New Creations Counseling and just connect with me. We're going to have many, many more updates about what's coming up. I have so many ideas that I have to share with you outside of the the recording um but you know it's it's gonna get good because i think that in these moments of of emotional hardship it's yeah. very important to connect with people and make it very personal yeah. make it very everyday you know day by day situations because there's so many broken people right now in so many different ways i mean i can't even begin to tell you and we're and i'm talking to you from teenagers to elderly people. Yes. I've never seen such a thing in my life. I just... It's amazing how people have become so disconnected. Yeah. The emotional lack of, the lack of even community has failed so much. Yeah. And, and, and people has become very selfish. Right. There's a lot of people hurting. Yeah. You know, a lot of people hurting. So we have a big job. We have a very big job. They were saying on the news that they are worried about the mental health of so many young people. 
I think the pandemic started up a very bad trend. Yeah. People fell back and they, some people haven't been able to bounce back from that period of time. And I think, you know, as hardships continue, one of the things that we can continue to do is to really exercise these muscles of resilience. You know, one of, I think it says, it, both in the in, in the scripture, like in, what is it? Uh, in Romans and in James, it says that suffering causes us to persevere. To persevere. And persevering causes us to endure. Mm-hmm. When we endure, we learn to have hope. Yes. And so times are going to be difficult. Times are already difficult for many. But we cannot give up. So we encourage those of you that are overwhelmed and alone and disconnected to to grow that muscle of resilience to that you can hope again, you can trust again, you can believe again, that it doesn't have to always be like that, but we fight and we overcome and then another battle comes in, we fight, we overcome, another battle comes in and that's what life is. I think sometimes I think when they say rest in peace, it's like you've been fighting this battle of being on this planet and now you can rest in peace. That's literally what it means. <laughs> And, and, and you know what, I, I find it very, very rewarding that when we go through trials and tribulations, it always gives us a chance to be an aid to somebody else that is going through what we already went through, you yeah. know, and I think that that's the purpose of life. I think the purpose of life that whatever hardship I went through and I and I'm an overcomer. Now I can literally step foot into the battlefield and stand in the gap for someone else Absolutely. and say, you got this. I went through this. This is how I got over it. This is how you're going to get through it, you know, because nothing lasts forever. Yeah. Our loneliness doesn't last forever. Our single moments don't last forever. Like everything changes. Everything changes constantly. And just uh, learning how to embrace where we are now and like you said, you know, stand, standing strong with the resilience and the strength, especially as women, you know, we, 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 we have what it takes to, we, we're very courageous. Yeah. You know, we are very courageous and, and we have to keep pushing through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we push through by acknowledging that this is what's happening. Cause some people just numb it and you're like, I'm not feeling anything, but keep it moving. But like yep. they, a sister, a sister of mine used to say, I'm like, how are you doing today? Well, I'll fake it till I make it. I say, no, you can't do that. You cannot fake it till you make it because you're just, you're just putting a bandaid over the wound. You have to make it without faking it, yes. you know, and, and, and we have to build that culture, you know, yes. don't sweep it under the rug. Speak to somebody, seek for help. If you're dealing with a situation, it doesn't matter how small people may think it is. If it's big to you, it's big. If it's important to you, it should be important to everybody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is good. You know, so we are here. We come and we share a little nugget. So for some of you that are going through what we are talking about, hopefully you are encouraged. Mm -hmm. And We'll be back here soon. Subscribe to our channel, like us, and forward these messages to your friends so that they can be encouraged too. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.